Okay, so thank you very much for having us. We're um, glad to be here and have the opportunity to talk about some of our work in progress. So our work in, in general is Is this? <laughs> okay. Um, our work in general is, is digitally editing um, the... So our work in general is digitally editing the correspondence and literary papers by poet um, W. H. Auden held by Austrian archives. So um, during his last 15 years, British American poet W. H. Auden um, lived and worked partly in, in Austria. And while his American and British periods are very intensively researched, um, his Austrian period has attracted scholarly attention only, only very recently. And currently, we are editing uh, a smaller collection. That's Auden's um, working correspondence to his Austrian friend, um, Stella Musulin. And uh, the funding application for a much more extensive edition project is currently in review. And in these projects, uh, we approach the letters and literary papers by Auden from the position of a dual interest. So on the one hand, we have an interest in, in the poet's texts. And on the other uh, hand, we have an interest in the historical and biographical information that is contained in these, uh, in these letters and, and, and papers. And what would seem to fit the, this dual interest from a methodological or uh, technological point of view is uh, the model of assertive edition, which aims to address the data needs of both textual scholars and uh, historians. So on the one hand, um, this is uh, the precise transcription of text, the, 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 the in-depth markup of, of textual features in, in, in TI XML. And on the other hand, that's the facts as asserted by the transcription. That's the contents, the information contained, and um, something that uh, has to be provided in, in terms of rigorously structured data, interrelatable data, um, and uh, will be modeled in, in RDF. So uh, in our paper, we propose to, to render the RDF from um, uh, the TI XML markup. So um, one key interest in our project is very much in, in WH Auden's social relationships and his, his networks of artistic collaboration in Austria. In 1966, Auden wrote to Mussolini, Incidentally, next time you see Chester, scold him A for not writing to me, B for not answering Harrison's cable. So what we're interested in uh, here is that someone named Harrison, whoever that might be, had written a cable, that's a telegram, um, to Auden's partner and uh, artistic collaborator, um, Chester Conn. Uh, hello, everyone. What I would like to show you is now how we propose uh, annotating or creating a data model about this particular sentence. And this is a focus on uh, XML structure with TEI guidelines. And we propose the event node because we want it to be very close to what we do in RDF uh, later on. And event offers some uh, interesting properties like the temporal space with not before and not after to create kind of a time span because we're also not 100% sure when this happened, but we know it approximately. The evidence uh, informs us about um, the uh, additional scholarly intervention. So this is not very clear to everyone if you look at this text that this is an important data set. And the evidence is internal because this is a sentence from the text and not somewhere else. We also added types to inform uh, the audience about that this is a communication event and the subtype that 
is that it was a cable or a telegram, so we have also the document type. Um, the head offers additional information on uh, a descriptive label, so if someone looks at it, it no he knows uh, what is this event about. And last but not least, we can add participants by adding the anonymous block with person names. And in this particular case, we have role addressee and sender. And we've ref referred to a specific uh, URI or an identifier that holds additional information besides the label Chester and Harrison. So what does this look in RDF? We are going to model this uh, in Cydrox CRM, as you know, a data model to ensure interoperability between different data sources. We are describing the event as an instance of class CRM activity, and we are also assigning types in the form of Wikidata identifiers to improve interoperability. In this case, we are assigning the type communication to this activity, and we are also linking this activity to the persons who were involved, Chester, Kalman, and Harrison, and to the document which the letter that documents this event. And also the telegram, so the object by which this communication took place, is also assigned an identifier and a type in the form of the Wikidata entity telegram. Well, now things get a little bit more complicated. As my colleague said before, we already have identified who Chester Coleman is. It is actually our audience partner and collaborative as well artistic partner. So in this case, we identify with the URI that we have on Wikidata. However, and this is quite actually very we are true about, where there's no uncertainty to that. However, with the case of Harrison, we may assume that this could be the British song composer, Harrison Bert Whistle. This has come to attention because of the two uh, sources that we have, which is actually a Wikipedia, uh, a Wikipedia entry and also a Telegraph article. So, th to be said, the conclusion for, uh, from our side is uncertain. Okay. Um, so, what we just learned is that we know some things and we don't know other things, so we are uncertain about some things. And we know that we're talking about the person with a label Harrison, so we can create some kind of person ID from it. But we also uh, uh, wanted to show that this is an interpretation if we go further. And here we have an analytic attribute that refers to this interpretation node. And in this interpretation node, we made clear that once uh, we have, uh, we think that we are talking about this person Harrison Bird Whistle and have an external source, the Wikidata identifier. And we could basically also say that, okay, the uncertain part is about the values we're talking about and not how we encode it and the certainty is, let's say, kind of low. What we also wanted to add, and my colleague will talk about it, is an external source where we created a nano application where we also published this information on uh, 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 this uncertain person or where our sources came from to identify the Harrison Bird whistle. I think, yeah. So, again, RDF. Um, what we said till now can be modeled as triples. As you can see, this piece basically says that the letter uh, mentions uh, an entity. This entity is a person and has a textual manifestation in the form of Harrison, but it can also be identified by a Wikidata entity, which is exactly Harrison Bert Whistle. Uh, we would like to give, these are like the conclusions we have about the identification of this person, but we would like to give some contextual information about how we reach these conclusions. We are doing this by isolating these triples as a group of assertions that we technically call uh, a named graph in RDF, so these brackets you can see, and uh, we are using an extension of the Cyrus CRM model, CRM inf, that allows to model argumentation, and so we are defining this name graph here with identifier and as an instance of class proposition set from CRM inf. So how does CRM inf work? You have basically a belief, which is something that connects a proposition set, what we uh, saw before, with a belief value. So these assertions might be, for example, true, false, unknown. We are saying they are uncertain. So this is where we model uncertainty we can also say that this belief is the result of an argumentation that was carried out, for example, in our case, uh, by the AMP research group, 
And last but not least, we can say that this argumentation is documented in a nano-publication. A nano-publication is a set of assertions, of scholarly assertions, you can publish in a machine-readable form on dedicated online platforms, and they are exactly a really small scholarly contribution, exactly a nano-publication. Well, coming up to the end of our presentation, we would like to give you three main points to take home. First of all, by creating nano-publications, we actually give the opportunity to get an insight, the back, uh, a behind story, so to say, uh, for our background research. This is make uh, our research more transparent and also replicable, which are some of the FAIR principles. Secondly, by modeling uncertainty, and in general, we touch upon the uncertainty in a more productive way. That being said, we are tackling things and say that they are, say that we can be certain, but also, we are also leave out unnecessary, uh, we, leave, uh, we actually make sure that we don't leave any unnecessary information without being tracked. So we track, so to say, all information, neither, either, either certain or uncertain. Last, but definitely not least, by making RDF data easily extractable from TI XML, biographical and historical data can be semantically expressed in a clear and interoperable way. For instance, they could be easily inserted in a database for computation analysis and visualization. Uh, following that, we have some uh, the, nano uh, the, publica the publications for our research group, which were actually uh, with a digital edition, and also the, uh, the presentations that we actually see today. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>